In my eyes, you will always be one of the greats. Minions The Rise of Gru was released a couple of weeks ago and it's already proven to be a major success. This shouldn't surprise you all too much because we've been waiting for about five years since it was announced back in 2017. It's the fifth movie in the franchise and has already pulled in more than half of a billion dollars at the box office. Considering the fact that it's only been in theaters for a few weeks, that's pretty impressive. However, if you've seen the movie, then you probably already know that there is some short after credit scenes and if you were in a hurry to leave the cinema after the credits started rolling, then I'm sorry to tell you this, but you missed a great scene. For those who didn't watch it, I'm pretty sure that you caught everything that there is to catch in the scene. After all, it's only a few minutes long, but you're wrong because there are some secrets that are hidden in it. Don't believe me? Well, I'm about to tell you all the hidden secrets. So, come along. Okay, I'm on it. If you've seen the Despicable Me movies, you already know who Dr. Nefario is. He is the evil genius scientist who works with Gru and invents different machines to help Gru be a great villain. Well, good is kind of subjective here because Dr. Nefario's inventions didn't always work. It was hit or miss with him and you could always never really predict what was going to happen. Now, before the release of Minions The Rise of Gru, many fans wondered about the backstory of Dr. Nefario. We wondered how he met Gru and how he came came to work for Gru. We finally got our answers in the Minions movie, but it was far from what we expected. In the new movie, we find out that Dr. Nefario has been an evil scientist long before he met Gru, but he was not exactly a scientist for hire. In fact, he had a day job working at a record store named Criminal Records, which he also owned. Now, the interesting thing here is that it looks like Dr. Nefario is also a music lover himself. If you've ever had to start a business, then you'll know that many business owners prefer to start businesses that are related to something that they enjoy doing. That is because it's easier to pour your time and energy into something you enjoy doing. And from what we saw of Dr. Nefario at the record store, it makes a lot of sense to conclude that he loved music. I mean, Gru offered him a job working for him to become an evil scientist and he turned down the job to continue running his record store. I don't know about you guys, but this screams to me that he loved music. Under what circumstances would we use this? But Anyway, I'm... Um... As I said earlier, Dr. Nefario owned and worked in a record store named Criminal Records, which is actually a front for the headquarters of the supervillain group The Vicious Six. As you guys know, The Vicious Six betrayed their leader, Wild Knuckles, and threw him out of the group. This led to a vacancy in the group which had to be filled, and the group decided to hold an audition for interested villains to apply to join. Now, of everyone in the world, it's easy to conclude that Dr. Nefario knew The Vicious Six best. After all, he runs the front of their evil lair. This means that he would have known about the open space and vacancy before anyone else, so he could have easily auditioned to join the group. Plus, he would have an advantage because of his closeness with the villains, so it would have been a done deal for him and he wouldn't have to worry himself too much. But he didn't audition to join the group and instead preferred to run his record store, and this suggests that Dr. Nefario wasn't interested in being a villain. He just likes to invent weird machines. In the after credits scene, we see Gru go to the store and offer Dr. Nefario a partnership. Dr. Nefario refused the partnership and said that he is more content to just continue running criminal records. But Gru then offers to hire him as a scientist instead. And that's when we see Dr. Nefario finally give in to the pressure. So this tells us that while Dr. Nefario likes villainry, he does not want to be a villain himself because he definitely had more than enough chances to become Come one if he really wanted to. Well, one thing that we know about the minions is that they like to be evil. Sure, they're cute and cuddly and they can sometimes be sweet, but don't be deceived because underneath all of that cuteness, they love villainry. In fact, it was established in the first Minions movie that they are always on the quest to find the biggest and most evil villain to serve. In Minions The Rise of Gru, we see them try their best to help Gru become a villain, but honestly, they were often a pain in the behind because, well, they're not so smart. 
card. I love the minions, but I think we can all agree that intelligence is not exactly their strong suit. But what they lack in intelligence, they make up in another way, and that's manipulation. I know that when you think of the minions, manipulation is not the first word that jumps to mind, but they are clearly super manipulative. We see this for the first time when they conceive Master Chow to teach him Kung Fu, but their manipulative skills really came into play when Gru was trying to convince Dr. Nefario to come and work for him. When Nefario refused, the minions did this puppy dog eyes thing that made it impossible for Nefario to say no. So this means that the minions know their charm and they're also manipulative enough to know when to turn the charm on to get what they want. Okay, fine, fine because you had a nightmare, but just too late. When they first met Dr. Nefario and Minions the Rise of Gru, he was kind to Gru and even gave him a sticky gun thing that Gru then uses to steal the Zodiac Stone from the Vicious Six. Dr. Nefario was not obligated to help Gru in any way, but he did so. And this showed us that he did care for Gru in his own way, but it was in the after credits scene that we really got to see how much Dr. Nefario cared about Gru. As I said earlier, Earlier, he got an offer from Gru to come and work for him as a mad scientist and he accepts the offer after a few seconds of manipulative bagging from the minions. But when he accepted the offer, there is something that I don't think many people understood. And that's the fact that he was basically agreeing to work for free. Now I know this is not discussed in the scene, but I think that it is one of those things that goes without saying. I mean, he was accepting to work for Gru, who was only a 12 year old child. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sure that I know any 12 year olds who can can afford to pay an evil scientist to work for them. Gru was still an upcoming villain, so there's no way that he had gathered enough money to afford Dr. Nefario. This means that Nefario was pretty much working for free. But hey, as they say, if you do what you love, then you'll never feel like work, so I guess this is the case with Dr. Nefario. Plus, he probably never shut down criminal records, so he could be making some money from that. Everybody here for the interview? Me too. Finally, let's talk about the fact that Gru has had his airplane for many years. In Despicable Me 1, we see him in a weird airplane thing that he flies everywhere. But in the after credits scene in Minions 2, we find out that the airplane was actually an invention by Dr. Nefario. In Despicable Me 1, Gru is about 50 years old, which means that he's had the airplane for about 38 years. Yeah, that's a really long time, and it's impressive that the airplane held together for that long. In fact, it is still in in use because at the end of Despicable Me 3, we see Gru's twin brother, Drew, steal the airplane and escape in it. Even though the after credits scene was kind of short, there are so many hidden secrets that are easy to miss if you don't pay close attention. There are also some hidden secrets that you miss, so now I want to know what you guys think. Which one of these hidden secrets do you find the most interesting? Which one blew your mind the most? Let us know in the comment section and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. This is Gloucester's moment!